In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a fresh Vue 3 project running Vite. For my preferred stack, I'm going to install and configure ESLint with Prettier, the new Vue router, the new Vuex store, and Tailwind CSS. Since the Vue CLI uses Webpack and not Vite by default, we need to configure everything manually if we want to use Vite. And we definitely want to use Vite. It is lightning fast. Let's start by initializing a new Vite app. We're simply following the instructions in the official documentation. npm init at vjs slash app. And then from the prompt, we're going to select Vue.js. And our app is set up super fast. We'll cd into the folder and run npm install. And we're all set. Now we can do npm run dev to spin up the dev server. And you'll see that it loads incredibly fast. And this was the first load. It's exponentially faster during hot reloads now. So we'll notice that we have our default Vue 3 application here with reactivity and everything. Next, let's install Tailwind. Again, we're just going to be following the documentation. So first we install Tailwind and its dependencies. Next, I'm going to initialize Tailwind CSS to create the config file and the post CSS file as well by passing the dash P flag. Now we open up our code editor. And we now need to create a CSS file to bring in all the Tailwind utilities. Again, you can find these on the Tailwind CSS website or just copy them from the video. Next, we need to import this CSS file that we just created. So we'll go into our main.js and import it here. Next is an optional step. If you want to reduce the footprint of your Tailwind CSS file, we can purge classes that are not being used. We go into our Tailwind config and we tell it which files to look for. Now Tailwind is all set up, but you do need to restart your web server. Next, we'll install ESLint and Prettier along with their plugin and config for Vue. I'm going to paste this in, but I'll leave this command for you in the video description below. Next, we need to create a .eslintrc.js file and paste in some configurations. We do the same thing for prettier with a .prettierrc.js file. And now our format on save should be working. Next, we'll install Vue Router and we need version four for Vue 3. Once it's installed, we need to create a folder called router under src. And in the router folder, we want to create index.js. Here we're going to set up the router. We're going to imp import create router and create web history from view router. We're going to have an array of routes, which we're going to populate in a little bit. And then we're going to initialize the router. We want to use history mode, so we pass create web history and then the routes. Lastly, we want to export this. Now we want to make sure that our view app uses this router. So we go over to main.js and import the router file. And then we use it before the app is mounted. Now when we go to our browser, in the console we can see this warning telling us that it doesn't find a location with the root path. And that's because we didn't define any routes in our router file. So let's do that now. So we want our root path. For that, we will give the name for the component home and then the component itself, also called home. This home component doesn't exist yet. So let's make that file now. Under components, we'll make a file called home.view and I'll gener generate some scaffolding here, and we'll just put home. Next, we need to go over to app.view, and we can remove all this boilerplate that came with the install. And in our template, we want the router view to be called. Last but not least, don't forget to import the home.view file in the router file. Now, when we go over to the browser, we can see that the root path is sending us to the home component as defined in the router file. Next up, we're going to install Vuex. 
Once we've installed the package, we're going to create a folder under SRC called store and then create an index.js file inside that store folder. Here we're going to set up the store. So we're going to begin by importing create store from Vuex. We'll also import a module called user. This doesn't exist just yet. We're going to make it in a minute. Now we initialize our store. We're going to pass in that module that we just imported above. And finally, we make sure we export this. Now let's create that module folder under store and then create a user.js file for our user module. And now we're just going to put in some boilerplate for a Vuex module. Now our user module is all set. We want to make sure we use it in the app. So we go to main.js and we import it just like we did the router and we use it before mounting the app just like we did the router. Now to test that our Vuex store is working, we're going to need some test data. So we're going to go into the state and define a name. And we'll create a mutation which sets the name. Finally, we'll create an action called save name, which is what the view component will dispatch. This action simply calls the mutation set name and passes along the data as the payload. Now let's interact with this from our home component. We can delete this hello world.view file that came with the scaffolding. We'll go to our home component and we'll use the Vuex store here. We'll use this new feature, script setup, which essentially makes the entire script area a setup block and we don't need to explicitly return things to the template. So to bring in the Vuex store here, we're going to need to import use store from Vuex and then uh, create a constant and initialize it there. Now in order to display the name from the uh, Vuex store, we're going to need to use a computed property. So we're going to import computed from view. Now we create a constant called name, use the computed property here, and this returns from the store the state of the user module and name. Now we go up into the template and we display the name here. Back in Chrome, we can see the name appearing in the template of the home component. This name is coming from the Vuex store user module state. Before moving forward, I'd just like to do a little bit of styling using Tailwind CSS, just so that it looks a little bit better in the browser. So I've added some padding to the main uh, app container. So I'll make this home heading an H1 tag and make the text bold and bigger and give it some margin bottom. There we go, that looks much better. So next I wanna create an input box where I can type in a new name and change the name that's being displayed on screen. So I'll create an input field and I'll give it some basic styling. So I see that the name is too close to the input field, so I'm going to give it some margin bottom to create some more space. Yeah, that looks better. Also, my input field border seems a bit light, so I'm going to give it a darker shade of gray. Yeah, that looks better. Next, I'll create a button to submit the text. I'll give it some basic styling as well. Make the text white, make the button itself to be indigo, and give it some padding. Okay, uh, it's need to make, we'll make it rounded, and it's kind of stuck to the input field, so we'll give the input field some margin right. There we go. So next we're going to use Vue3's reactivity 
and we'll import ref from view and we'll create a constant called new name which will be a reference to an empty string we can use this reference as our v model property for the input field so now whatever the user types in the input field is stored under new name next we want to handle the user clicking the submit button so we'll create a function called save name and when the user clicks submit, we are going to dispatch to the save name action in the Vuex store, and we're going to pass the value of new name. Next, we add an on click event to the button to call the save name function when it's clicked. So back in Chrome, now if we type in a new name and submit, the name changes. Another thing we can do here is that after we submit a new name, we want to clear the field. So we'll do new name dot value and give it a blank string. So now when we put in a new name and click submit, it empties the field. So the last thing I'd like to show you in this video is adding a new page and then redirecting to it when a new name is submitted. So we'll create this page now. We'll create a new file called about.view under components. So we create a very basic view component here. So what we want to do here is display about followed by the name that is in the Vuex store. So that's what we'll do on the front end in the template. We'll make this an H1 tag and we'll give it some, some formatting and styling here. So now we want to access the value of name in the Vuex store. So we'll do that here. We'll make this uh, script setup just like we did last time. And we're going to be using a computed property. So we're going to import computed from view. And then we import use store from Vuex. And we want to initialize this store. Great. So now we can go ahead and get the name. We'll say computed and have it return from the store, the state of the user module and name. So the next thing we need to do is register a path for this about page that we just created. So we'll go into our router index file and we'll import this about page. And we'll duplicate that and create about and change the path to slash about. So now we have a route slash about that goes to that about component. Now we go back into our home.view and we're going to initialize the router here. So we'll import use router from view router and we'll create a router and initialize it. Now after the submit button is clicked, we want to redirect using router.push to slash about. So back in the browser, if we type in Job and hit submit, we get taken to our new page and it says about Job. So we've done a lot of stuff. Let's recap. We set up a clean Vue.js app that is running on Vite, added and configured ESLint and Prettier for linting and code formatting, installed and configured Tailwind CSS for styling, added and configured Vuex and Vue Router, and demonstrated how to use them.